On the evening of June 6, 1883, about two miles outside of Seymour, Indiana, tragedy struck. Caught in a massive rainstorm, a fast express train traveling from Chicago faced a washout, leaving the track flooded due to erosion of topsoil. Traveling at a speed of 45 miles an hour, the train flew off the track and destroyed the engine, baggage car, chair car, and a Pullman sleeper. Four railway workers were killed. George Ammons, the train's baggage master, was instantly killed with blunt force trauma to the head. He left behind a wife who could no longer count on his income. Railroad accidents were commonplace in Indiana during the 1880s, leaving scores dead from horrific injuries. The railroad companies at that time were under no legal obligation to help the families of those who died or were injured on the job. This harrowing reality became the focal point of a young, first-term state representative from Terre Haute named Eugene Victor Debs. Debs worked diligently to hold the railroads accountable for the welfare of their employees and their employees' families. In this episode of From the Vault, we'll delve into Debs' legislative crusade for those who died or were injured working on the railroads. Eugene V. Debs was elected to the Indiana House of Representatives in 1884. A prominent leader of the Brotherhood of Locomotive Firemen, a union dedicated to the rights and protections of railroad workers, Debs knew firsthand the toll that this kind of work took on a person. In the State Board of Health's 1883 report, railroad accidents accounted for 121 deaths in Indiana, or 0.81% of the total deaths that year. The year before, it had only accounted for 0.72%. Almost nothing could be done for the families of railroad workers who died on the job. They often didn't have the resources or legal representation to take on the railroad companies. As the number of deaths increased, the need for some kind of government remedy grew more apparent. As historian Clifton J. Phillips noted, by the 1880s, Hoosier legislators were becoming increasingly concerned about certain aspects of rail transportation within state boundaries, particularly the large number of injuries and deaths resulting from railroad operations. This was the situation Debs came into during his first and only term in the Indiana General Assembly. Debs served on two influential committees, railroads and corporations, the latter of which he was chairman he also introduced a number of bills relating to the regulation of agriculture, business licenses, and railroad engineers. However, it was one particular bill, motivated by the tragedies of railroad accidents, which became one of Debs's lasting legacies during his time in the General Assembly. This is House Bill Number 92, introduced by Debs on January 15, 1885. Its preamble read, an act concerning the liability of corporations and companies for the injury or death of an employee caused in whole or in part by the carelessness or negligence of a fellow servant or co-employee and declaring an emergency. While this proposal didn't cover all railroad accidents, so-called acts of God cannot be leveraged against a corporation, it did provide some form of compensation to those harmed or killed by the negligence of others. Since so many accidents during the period were caused by employee error and convincing a business-friendly legislature to make corporations liable for everything would be difficult, Debs shrewdly crafted a bill that would be nearly impossible to thwart. Initially, it seemed easily poised to become law. It passed a first reading after being nearly postponed in the Railroad Committee and then brought to the floor of the House for a second and third reading. During House floor discussions, Debs defended the bill, saying, I want to have it so that when an employee of a railway is hurt through the negligence of a co-laborer or of the company, he may have redress from the company. The traveling public is protected, and the employees should also have redress. I appeal on behalf of the engineers, firemen, and brakemen for this bill. It was unanimously passed by the Indiana House of Representatives on March 24, 1885. There wasn't a single vote against it. Sadly, the bill's time in the Senate didn't go as smoothly. 
It was called up to a vote on April 4, 1885, and was then referred to a committee and never brought up again during the session. This is a classic example of a bill dying in committee, leaving it to languish in the Senate so as not to become law. Debs did not enjoy his time in the Indiana House after his first legislative session. In fact, he was disgusted with legislative ways, the Terre Haute Daily Express reported. When the Railroad's committee recommended postponement of his injured workers bill, he was so incensed that he considered resigning. However, he was convinced to stay by his colleagues. But the Daily Express noted that it is hardly probable that he will willingly return. The papers were right. He didn't seek re-election and never served in government again. But Eugene V. Debs' work wasn't all for naught. In 1893, just a few years after he left the General Assembly, Representative Samuel Hench of Allen County introduced a bill quite similar to Debs's, both in letter and in spirit. This time, however, it passed out of the House, Senate, and became law on March 6, 1893. The state had passed meaningful legislation that finally allowed injured workers and bereaved families to seek compensation for railroad-related injuries or deaths. The legislative process finally worked for railroad laborers. After leaving the Indiana General Assembly, Debs became an important political voice in America during the turn of the 20th century. He dropped his Democratic Party affiliation and dedicated the rest of his life to the cause of socialism and the rights of workers. He founded the American Railway Union in 1893 and defended railroad workers during the infamous Pullman strike. He also co-founded the Industrial Workers of the World and ran for president multiple times on the Socialist Party ticket. In 1920, he won nearly a million votes for president while incarcerated for criticizing American involvement in World War I. The labor reforms of the Progressive and New Deal eras, the eight-hour workday, weekends, unions, and ending child labor came in part through Debs' tireless work. But before all of that, he was just a first-term Indiana state representative who believed that what happened to workers like George Ammons shouldn't happen to anyone. We often focus on the bills that become law when talking about politics. We seldom reflect on the noble failures whose time had not yet come. Debs' Railroad Workers Bill was just that kind of proposal. Nevertheless, his efforts opened up a dialogue on the importance of worker protections in an era only beginning to grapple with the social challenges accompanying industrialization. Most importantly, Debs' story teaches us a crucial lesson. Passing legislation is hard work often taking years of committee hearings, floor readings, and lobbying other legislators until it becomes law. He may not have achieved his goal, but he paved the way for future legislators to finish the job on behalf of the engineers, firemen, and brakemen. <laughs> <laughs>